Hi everyone and welcome to Recording Dojo. I'm Brian Clark and this time I'm going to show you five spaced pair mic techniques that should inspire you to capture your best guitar tone yet. You ready to get started? Tighten up your belts. The dojo is now open. What is spaced pair mic techniques? Well, essentially, it means that you're using two microphones to capture a single sound source. In this case, my guitar amp. The most important thing that we want to remember is that the arrival of the sound source ideally will reach both microphones at exactly the same time, or as close as we can make it. If they're too far out of balance, meaning one microphone is receiving the sound before the other is, then we have to start checking for phase alignment, and I'll show you how to do that as we get further along in the video. What I'm holding now is probably one of the most iconic microphones, and one that we all know, especially as guitarists, and that is the Shure SM57. We like to call this one of the good guy mics, and uh, it's hard to mess this thing up. It's got a set cardioid pattern. So most people think that when they're handling an SM57 that the diaphragm for the microphone is actually right here, but it's not. It's actually below this point. This is merely a, a windscreen and a protection for the capsule itself. So keep that in mind, and when I show you how I phase align it with the ribbon mic later, you'll see why it's offset slightly. The next microphone that we're going to be using is a ribbon mic, and oftentimes I like to pair a condenser mic like an SM57 with some type of ribbon mic, and there are many great ribbon mics out on the market. I encourage you to investigate them. I'm a huge fan of ribbon mics, and oftentimes when I record guitar, I usually only use a ribbon mic, and I record it in mono, just one mic. But in this case, we're going to be using two mics today, and I've chosen a Cloud JRS34 microphone. Uh, it's a USA-made microphone. It's made in Arizona by Roger Cloud, and uh, it's a wonderful mic. So this one has a figure-eight pattern, which means that it actually picks up what's in front of it and what's directly behind it. So this is going to give us some depth and some space in our recording, which is nice. Let me show you the parts of the speaker that we're going to be miking today and the parts that are going to give you the most tonal variety. The first one is the dust cap. That's the bullseye at the center of the speaker. And essentially, its job is to protect the coil from debris accumulating as it moves back and forth between the magnetic field. If debris does get in there, it can actually cause damage to the speaker, and in some cases, it can cause fire. The next part is the cone, and that's the paper, polymer, there's lots of different types of cones that are made by different speaker manufacturers, but this is what we generally call the cone of the speaker. And then finally on this outside edge here, we call this the surround, and this little sticky black, almost tacky type of substance that's on the edge of the speaker is generally what some manufacturers call doping. And depending upon how much doping is on it, it will affect the response of the speaker. Let me show you how we're going to be miking the speaker today. The first example, we're going to place the 57 directly on axis with the dust cap of the speaker. This is going to give us the most high-end response out of the three. Then we're going to move to the center of the cone, and that's going to give us a nice blend between the highs, the mids, and the lows, at least in my opinion. Results may vary. And then we're going to move to the surround or the outer edge of this uh, speaker and that is going to give us a lot of low end response with very little articulation. You can be the judge which works best for you. With regards to the ribbon mic, I'm going to leave it stationary for the first three examples and I'm going to set it in the center of the cone. Finally, I'm going to reamp the playing example so that way as I move the mics to different positions you're going to listen to exactly the same performance and that way you'll be able to better judge how each position sounds. A quick break to thank our sponsor for Recording Dojo, Astrope Cables. Astrope Pro Audio Cables are trusted by artists and producers across the globe and feature a unique technology that delivers unsurpassed performance with an aesthetic and rugged design. You can learn more and buy their cables directly at astrope.com. Now back to the dojo. So for example one, I'm going to again have the SM57 pointed directly at the dust cap and the ribbon mic is going to be right in the center of the cone. Now as we move forward, 
I'm going to leave the ribbon mic stationary and move the 57 to the opposite side of the speaker. I'm going to be playing through a 1964 Gretsch DC 6120 through a early 60s Gemini 2 all original stock. <laughs> In this example, we're going to move the SM57 from the center of the dust cap over to the center of the cone while leaving the ribbon mic in place. In this example, I'm going to move the SM57 even further to the edge or the surround of the cone while still leaving the ribbon mic in place. For example four, I've moved the SM57 back to the middle of the cone, like we did in example two, and this time I've taken the ribbon mic and I've moved it three and a half feet away from the amp to capture more room tone and a bigger sound. Let's listen to it. So with example four, because I've moved the ribbon mic further away from the SM57, we want to really check our phase. Now phase relationship is going to be important, especially the further and further we get away from the sound source with one of the microphones. Because remember, what we're hearing is two microphones summed together. And that's where phase becomes crucial. So, let me show you what that looks like graphically by zooming in on the waveforms in my DAW so you can see how the arrival time of the sound to each of the microphones is different. Okay, this top track up here is the ribbon mic and the bottom one is the SM57. Makes sense that this one is earlier because it's closest to the amp. So what I want to do is take this upper track, my ribbon mic, and I want to flip the phase on it to make sure that I'm getting the best tone possible. And in my DAW, it is down here at the bottom. This little circle with a line through it is the standard graphic representation for phase. So by clicking it, I can flip the phase and flip the polarity of this track only. And what I want to do is listen to the phase flipped and normaled to see which one I like better. I might like both of them, and that's totally fine. Finally, for our fifth example, we're going to leave the SM57 where it has been, and I've taken the ribbon mic and moved it even further away from the amp. Now it's approximately six feet away from the amp, 
because I really want to try to capture the majority of the room sound. Let's listen to it. Don't forget to flip the phase on this example as well to see which one you might like better. So I hope you were able to learn some new mic techniques from this dojo and it inspires you to go crazy and think about capturing your guitar in new ways that you may not have tried. One thing to remember, there's no right way to do this. This is just merely to be a creative springboard for you to make further action and explorations with. So until next time, keep experimenting, keep an open mind. Namaste.